I'm Steve Wickham, I'm the fiddler with the Water Boys. I've been with the band since 1985. Well, I've been learning the fiddle for practically my whole life. I started learning classical music and going to the Royal College of Music in Dublin. Irish traditional music was never far from my ears though growing up here in Ireland and I, some standout traditional fiddlers that pulled my attention in that direction at a young age. People like Kevin Burke, Tommy Peoples and Frankie Gavin. When I started to explore traditional music by buying some tune books, I encountered my first major challenge. The tunes, as generally written, don't have the swing and embellishments that you'd hear from the great masters of trad on the records. Irish traditional music is an oral tradition. Tunes are handed down from player to player over generations. I found this book in McCullough Pickett's, uh, The Trip to Sligo it's called, and it's full of traditional tunes from South Sligo fiddlers, written out close to how they are actually played. Imagine reading a book that has the characters talking in their own dialect or accent. That's what you get here. This book was made up of contributions from the repertoire of musicians deep in the tradition and live and well in Sligo at the time it was written, 1989. The book in hand, I headed for the Fla in Sligo back in 1989. I was always aware that there was something very special about Sligo fiddle and style and the master musicians who lived here. So now I'm living in this part of the world and I moved here not long after that flower. And I have the added joy of playing among this living tradition. Being part of the musical life here means getting closer to the source. Any bits of digging around that I've done always led back to three iconic men from South Sligo that had recorded in the United States in the early decades of the 20th century. And it seems to me that no discussion of Sligo style is complete without reference to the players. Paddy Killorden, James Morrison, and most especially, Michael Coleman. I am curious about Sligo style as it has evolved today. So over this series of four programmes, I'm going to ask four of Sligo's best fiddle players to show me different tunes that they play and what they really think shines a light on the Sligo style of fiddling. In the coming programmes, I'm going to talk to Philip Duffy, Oisin McDermott and Seamie O'Dowd. But for today, I've sought out one of the best of Sligo fiddlers, Declan Folan. Declan is from Bunnanadden, the heartland of Sligo style. He told me he got his first fiddle from Ted McGowan and his first fiddle lesson from Fred Finn, one of the great Sligo masters. Declan told me how he was taught by other players that are now seen as heirs to the tradition, brought to life by Coleman, Killorn and Morrison. He learned his tunes directly from teachers such as Sheila O'Dowd, Andrew Davey and Paddy Ryan, players that anyone with an interest in Sligo style would do well to take a closer look at. So, what had he learned about Sligo style from these masters? Is it possible to try and put it into words? He also met and played with New York Sligo fiddler Martin Wynne, something that has stayed with him after all these years. After discussing all of this, we finally got stuck into a tune that Declan picked out as one of the essential part of the Sligo repertoire. Martin Wynne's number one, or is it number two? Once we clear that up, get your fiddle ready. Well, maybe we should, we should play a bit of music now. Yeah. Sure, we could try um, Martin Wins. Martin Wins, yeah. 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 I'm afraid to say whether it's number one or number two. There's yeah. a bit of confusion, but yeah. Sheila O'Dowd calls it number one, I think, and uh, you call it number two, and other people call it number two. Yeah. Uh, and, but there's but we I, don't I, know. I, I, he should have he should have given it a name, shouldn't he? Like the the whistling postman or something oh, like that. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Or at the bottom of the road or something. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah but I, I think as well, um, Sheila is, is probably correct. Right. I would imagine. Um, as regards the two tunes and the ways they're played now in sessions, everyone just says we'll play Martin, Martin Wins number one or yeah. number two. It's um, just the two tunes. It's easier to go from number, uh, from probably number two to number one, so they probably sw swap uh, numbers yeah. around, I yeah. would imagine. Okay. Play it on your own for a second. <laughs> Thank you. 
Beautiful. F, A, low D. Yeah. And then F to up to G sharp. Repeat that again. Oh, yeah, that's very sly, wasn't it? It is, it. Just a, sort of a, a dead stop on the on the low A then. Just a, a B on the on the F sharp there. Okay. So. And then. Show us that again. Is that a C sharp? It is, yeah. So that's the little trip, that's the Sligo style there. Yeah. And, and just on the two Ds there, if you can slur into the first D and then have the last of the two Ds on a second. What's the... Where's the slur then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the slur gives you kind of the down bow on the, on the beat, isn't it? It does, yeah. That's what you're yeah. aiming for, really. Yeah. Um. And then... <laughs> so it's turn again. So it's... Uh. So what's that? So it's F. Sharp up to G sharp. Uh. No, F F sharp to G sharp. And then after that up to the high B. Yeah, that's, that's it. A bit of it, yeah. Yeah. Shall we try it right through? Try it. Let's see yeah. how we go. <laughs> right.
And there's just a few more triplets yeah. in, in the first part then. Um, well, that's a difficult one now. F sharp, G yeah. sharp, and onto A. Same, the same notes again, you can slur as well next time around rather than doing the same triplet in the same place. You can do the same fingering but without the triplet. So you got that. Oh, yeah. Now, there's always been a strong tie between New York and Sligo in terms of the fiddle. The recordings made by Sligo men in New York are what defined the style for generations to come. Martin Wind followed the other Sligo fiddlers to New York, and Declan feels that he's also defined a very strong New York Sligo style. He points to New York players like Andy McGann and Brian Conway, whose playing showcases the very best of Sligo music. For Declan, this means achieving great tone and variation, playing the rhythm for the tune and letting it breathe. These men all took their lead from Martin Wynn. Martin was the one that taught them the importance of coordinating between bows and fingers and making sure that variation is only there when it will enhance the tune. But Declan, this is why Martin Wynn's playing is so important for anyone trying to understand what Sligo style is. It's all to do with your perception of Sligo style. Um, You've got, you've got sort of the New York Sligo style, which is slightly classically, you know, influenced um, with the great tone that you know that the great Andy McGann, Brian Conway, um, they've handed it down to Dylan Foley and that. Um, yeah, it's 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 all it's down to um, for me the Sligo style go to someone that's you know and try and get the tonal variations that you can do with your bow hand. Um, yeah. you, have to, you have to generate the rhythm for the tune yourself right. without playing the, the tune way too fast. If you're comparing Martin Wynne and Michael Coleman, yeah. Michael Coleman would have probably, with that particular triplet that I was saying, you could slur either time around. Martin Wynne would probably... Show me. That triplet. Um, <laughs> You know, whether it was in this, in that tune, or if it, if it, yeah, if the, if it arose in another tune where yeah. he could fit that in, Martin Wind seemed like he'd put in a real subtle triplet like that, whereas Coleman a lot of the time would, would slur like sort of, and, and show very, me the and very occasionally yeah. put in the triplet. So, I can see I, it, you have to explain you know, the difference between that to yeah. me because I can't, I can't really see that. Right. So that's. Yeah. Triplet, Martin, single that's Martin, bow, that's he, Martin yeah, style. he would probably do that more times than he would slur it. Yeah, whereas so Coleman would do Coleman would do it the other the opposite with. Yeah. So he's, he, you're talking about bowing now, you're talking about separate bowing. Bowing, yeah. But Martin, Martin's more likely to go. But yeah. that gives it a kind of a bounce though, doesn't it? It does, and it also does the other. But you can go faster when you're bow. You can bow go faster when you're bowing it in one bow. Is that it? Well, you can do, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you keep the flow of the tune. Uh, and yeah. Cole was for kind of fast, but the, uh, yeah. we we maybe look at that another time. Yeah. Um, I would say probably Coleman would have played his, his stuff a small bit faster than Martin Wynn would have played his stuff. Yeah. Not an awful lot. Them, them older recordings sort of have them. They, they've been sped his, up though as have, well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've heard, I've got lucky enough to get a listen to some of his older recordings, Coleman's, in, yeah. the, in the late 30s before he, yeah. his recordings stopped. They're slower. Stopped, they? Yeah. they really are slower. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they sped those early recordings up, you can tell, because the pitches, they're. they're, they're they're slightly out of tune, they're not concert pitch, no, they're not, they're, no. and they're, they're definitely sped up. Yeah. He also showed me that this part of the tune that he learned directly from Martin Wynne himself. We were talking, uh, uh, Martin, in that particular tune, this is Martin Wynne's number one, you, you do a beautiful thing that, that, uh, that I would never do, and, and uh, it's a, uh, how do you... Uh, 
it, with the G sharp and the, and the C sharp. What was that again? G sharps and the C sharps. So, yeah. Um, it was Martin himself I seen doing this, yeah. and then later on um, Andrew Davy. Okay. So and you, then you got your G sharp there. The interesting thing about that is that Martin wins his own G sharps, you know. And and if we've we've learned that everybody's learned these bare bones of the tune, so nobody yeah. has, not many people have the G sharp. Yeah. Interestingly, even though Martin Wynn wrote it himself, yeah. we just go straight from the to the B, yeah. and then Martin does. So if you're playing in a session with other musicians and you play Martin's version, which is against what people are playing from the book. So let's have, let's play it together. If I if you play Martin's version, Martin's version yeah. well I play a, a kind of a, a just a bare bones yeah. version. Right. All right. And That sounds pretty good to me. It sounds like even though we both have different styles and we're playing together in the same tune, it's it's yeah. it's they're not tight like a Cayley band tight. Everybody's yeah. got to get all the all the notes together. Yeah, it's individual. There is individual. individual so when we're playing in a session, that's the thing. The, the interesting thing yeah. is that there's not there's only so much room for individuality. There is. There is. If if we were sitting in a session, um, I would probably if you started the tune your idea for the tune, I would try and play as close to what you're doing. It would be an awful shame for me because I wouldn't be learning the proper style from Martin Wynn or your style. I, I think it's sort of respect for the musician and respect for the, yeah. the version of the tune that the other person is, is playing. Like, I find myself sometimes, if I'm just not concentrating, I go back and do something that I would do if I was playing on my own or something, but I, I try not to put the musician off that's took off taking the, the lead in the tune, you know? Yeah. Declan was playing some really amazing stuff and it made me think about something that a lot of people had said about Michael Coleman, that he was one of the first players that saw himself as a performer and that he really pushed the potential of the fiddle as a solo instrument. He refused to compromise the way he played to fit with other musicians. So what does this mean for players who are following in his footsteps now? So, so this kind of a sense of individualism that Michael Coleman had in his style that came on the record and came back to Sligo and you heard of him the first time when you were, when you were a kid. Yeah. Um, it kind of defines the Sligo style in a, in a way because it's, 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 it's the tune but it's got an individual nature in it. Oh God, it has, yeah. Yeah, it, and it, it, yeah. it does and Morrison and Paddy Killorn the yeah. same, even though they're, they're different fiddle players. Yeah. Just the, the people that they have learned from in, in the, the South Sligo area, like, um, you know, they, they, they keep it close to the one version of the tune, but yet, you know, if you listen to each one of them individually, they are different. After that, Declan and I got into playing a few more tunes. This one, The Lady on the Island. couldn't believe how much he was able to pack into each part of that tune, so I wanted to get a closer look. I got him to slow it down a little bit and walk me through what was going on. 
It's um, a lot to do with rolling and cuts, really, for, for me anyways, playing that tune. Well, what's a, what's a um, roll and a cut now? Rolls are, um, they're five notes. We'll, say, we'll just take a B roll, for instance, first finger. Um, that would be the main note in the roll, so it's yeah. a B roll. So it's all in one bow. Yeah. So it's B, B, C, B, A, B. So So in, in classical yeah. in classical music they call that the mordent. The mordent. The mordent. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an old it's an old ornamentation, very yeah. old ornamentation. So so that's the roll. And in in um, the cut then what's the cut? The cut is um, it's it's just a note that just sort of sneaks in. Sneaky note. Sneaks in before. We'll say if you're doing a D, for instance, you just sneak in with the E. Just flick the fourth finger just before it. Oh yeah. So I can imagine you as a kid practicing for hours on cuts and rolls. Yeah. Just cuts and rolls. Cuts and rolls. Yeah. On, yeah. 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 So yeah. in in a guitar playing parlance, that's the hammer on. The hammer Isn't on. It? Yeah, that's what be, yeah. So go back to the yeah. tune then. Yeah. So it's. Um, So you're doing it there. Yeah, and, and just after that, uh, what I would normally do once or twice after the the cut on the B, yeah. just uh, hit a F sharp. Yeah. So that's a little little trip of it. Oh, that's it. Yeah. A lot of the Sligo style is about ornamentation, rolls, cuts and so on. So I asked Declan to break these down for me. Elements that would be used in this tune to give a real Sligo blast. We'll just try the first part from the, from the start, from the B. And the cut. And the chord. Okay. And are you incorporating the chord into the tune, like, or oh, just yeah. at the end? Just, just you know, don't, don't sort of dwell on the, on the chord. Just hit it as oh, yeah. the note. You know, the, the main note you're looking for there will be the A. Uh, yeah, and just carry on with the tune. Yeah. You know, don't. Okay, you've got the chord in a different place than yeah. I was imagining. and a D roll. Oh yeah, beautiful. Oh yeah. So so in context then so so you plan to play that again okay. for the top? Just draw on the open D string. Yeah, two rolls, one after the other. So, and. And then? Yeah, and. Okay, that's a clever little turn yeah. into the second part. 
Do, do, do that again from yeah. the start. Just yeah. Just do that a little bit again. I'll try it one more time, so <laughs> Now don't worry, this is just step one, a bit like Sligo style tune, there's lots more to pack in. Now, the next lesson I'm going to get is from Philip Duffy, who as a youngster actually featured in my book, This Trip to Sligo. I'll see you again. <laughs> 